Hey everyone, Sacred Saiyan here, welcoming you to the second episode of the series, What If Goku Was In Naruto Shippuden? You guys have been asking for it, so I'm bringing it to you now. And if you end up enjoying this video, then please consider subscribing, and make sure to like the video, and comment down below if you enjoyed. This is going to be a good one. And if you want to support me, then you can become a channel member. There will be a link to join in the description. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. This video begins where the last one ended. Goku has just arrived at Orochimaru's hideout, using Flying Thunder God in order to confront Sasuke. Naruto wants to join in on the fight, but even he knows he'll just get in the way, so he stays silent. Goku asks Sasuke if they could take this somewhere else. He doesn't want their friends being in the crossfire, and he knows deep down, Sasuke doesn't want that either. Sasuke says that he doesn't care, so Goku tells Sasuke to follow him as they both body flicker a short distance away, allowing Team 7 the chance to recover. While Goku will try to bring Sasuke back to the village, even if it means beating him into submission. The battle commences, with Goku and Sasuke dashing towards each other, beginning a taijutsu exchange. They seem to be quite relative in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat, however Goku does have a clear edge, which is why Sasuke draws his blade and begins using that to slash at Goku, Goku being forced on the defensive in order to dodge the various swings, until he eventually catches Sasuke's sword and asks if they are going to get serious. Sasuke then activates his Sharingan and punches Goku away, Goku using this opportunity to activate the first gate. The four tails inside of them ask why Goku doesn't just use his chakra. Sasuke can't absorb chakra like that Akatsuki member they fought before. Goku says that if he did that, then he might accidentally end up killing Sasuke, and even though he is willing to beat Sasuke into submission, killing him is not on the table. Sasuke then rushes at Goku with a Shidori, Goku creating a Rasengan and running at Sasuke, as they clash, and while they clash, Goku tells Sasuke that they don't have to keep fighting. Sasuke can still come back to the village. He still hasn't done anything to make him a rogue ninja. Sasuke tells Goku that there is nothing left for him in the village. The only thing he needs is power, so he can avenge his clan and kill his brother. The leaf village can't help him gain that power. Their clash creates an explosion, which sends them both flying back. And Goku tells Sasuke that he actually came across Itachi and made him run away. So clearly, the village can help reach that level of power. Sasuke puts Goku under a Genjutsu and says that Goku is lying. Nobody in the Leaf could survive an encounter with his brother, even the Sarnin fear his strength. The Four Tails then breaks Goku out of the Genjutsu, just as Sasuke is about to stab Goku with a Shidori. But just in time, Goku is able to create a mud wall to block it. Goku thanks the Four Tails before jumping over the mud wall, landing on Sasuke's head, and he then jumps off his head into the air, throwing 20 kunai around the surrounding area and Sasuke's Sharingan dart their gaze at every single one of them, waiting for Goku to appear at one of them. And then, Goku does appear on top of one, shouting THUNDER KICK as he travels towards Sasuke at incredible speeds. Sasuke is barely able to dodge out of the way due to the Sharingan's precognition and slashes Goku, but Goku then turns into lightning itself and Sasuke gets electrocuted, paralyzing him for a moment as the real Goku crashes down above him with his lightning style, Force Hammer. Goku didn't actually use the Flying Thunder God. He stayed in the air after jumping off Sasuke and created a lightning clone to use the Flying Thunder God as a distraction. Sasuke then body flickers a short distance away, performing some hand signs as thunder clouds begin to swirl above himself and Goku. Goku gets into a defensive stance, not sure what is about to happen, but Sasuke shouts, Kiran! as a dragon made out of thunder flies towards Goku. A chakra avatar of the four tails then coming out of Goku and catching the thunder dragon, struggling to hold it back. Sasuke then uses the fireball jutsu on the four tails avatar, weakening it just enough for Kirin to break through and crash into Goku, creating a massive explosion which is seen for miles. Sasuke looks down into a massive crater of his own creation. Goku laying in the bottom of it in his base form, heavily injured, but the Four Tails used its lava release to seal Goku's wounds. Sasuke looks down at Goku, thinking there is definitely no way he made his brother flee, but if he actually used the power of the Four Tails from the start, he might have won against him. Though, he could have just suppressed it with the Sharingan anyway. Rochimaru and Kabuto then appear, Kabuto saying that if they kill the Four Tails Jin Chiriki now, it will set back the Akatsuki's plans until the Four Tails Chakra regenerates, but Orochimaru says that they will be leaving the brat alone for now. If he really was able to survive an encounter with Itachi, he may be helpful, along with his other friends, in killing some Akatsuki members for them. 
Sasuke then looks at Goku one last time. Maybe if Goku won that fight, it would have proved to him that Goku and Naruto's way of things was correct. But he guesses he'll never know. Sasuke, Orochimaru and Kabuto then disappear. Shortly after, Naruto, Sakura and Yamato arrive at the crater, asking if Goku is okay as Naruto and Sakura help him up. And Goku says he's fine. It's his own fault for holding back. He should have been able to stop Sasuke at that level. He didn't expect him to have that crazy powerful jutsu. Even the Four Tails could barely hold it back. Goku needs a jutsu with that kind of power. The group then head back to the Leaf Village. The team explaining to Tsunade everything that happened. And Roshi is also present. Once they hear about the strength of Sasuke, Tsunade and Roshi give each other a nervous look before telling the group to leave. Once alone, Roshi and Tsunade begin discussing Sasuke. Tsunade asks Roshi, if he is certain Goku is able to hold his own against Itachi, and Roshi says he is sure. However, according to Goku's report, Goku did have the edge on Sasuke in terms of power, but Sasuke has acquired a jutsu that was able to close that gap. Tsunade is still worried though. Even if Sasuke was weaker than Goku, he still beat him, and if Sasuke could beat someone on the level which rivaled Itachi Uchiha, that is concerning. Perhaps Itachi may have held back for some ulterior motive, that they are unaware of. Roshi strokes his beard, saying Tsunade may be right. Although Itachi had a facade of going all out, it did seem like he was pulling his punches, but he could be wrong. They should wait for Jirai to get back from his mission, and the three of them can discuss everything they know about the Akatsuki, and Itachi in particular. In the meantime, Roshi is going to give Goku some tips for his training. He is aware Kakashi has a similar idea to him once he recovers. Tsunade agrees, and Roshi leaves, finding Goku and introducing the idea of adding a change in chakra nature to the Rasengan. He knows Kakashi tried to do so in the past and failed, creating the lightning blade instead. But he believes Goku may be able to succeed where Kakashi failed, adding the lightning chakra nature to his Rasengan. At the same time, Goku could also try to use the Four Tails chakra to create a lava style Rasengan as well. While speaking to Kakashi previously, he also gave him the idea of using Shadow Clones in order to train. So Goku should create 2000 Shadow Clones. 1000 Shadow Clones to attempt to combine Lightning Release with his Rasengan, and the other 1000 to try combine the Four Tails Lava Release with his Rasengan. Unfortunately, Goku will have to perform this training alone, as Roshi has other matters to attend to. But if Goku ends up completing both of these new Jutsu, Goku should then just try to increase his power with the eight inner gates. Goku is excited to begin his training, so he thanks Roshi. Roshi going off as Goku creates his shadow clones and begins to train. Roshi isn't sure if Goku can handle this training, but he may need to if he'll continue to face threats on the level of the Akatsuki. In the distance, a man in an Akatsuki cloak is watching Goku training intently, a smirk wiping over their face as their eyes turn into Mongekyo Sharingan. But with that, I'm going to be ending off this part. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then make sure to subscribe, like, and comment to help me in the algorithm. I want to give a huge shout out to the channel members. I appreciate you guys so much for the support, but yeah, other than that, hope to see you all in the next one. Peace. Hey everyone, it's me Goku. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to my friend Sacred Saiyan on YouTube. Thank you all for watching.